call is Hello? being recorded. Hi, um, Brandon. Yeah, this call is being recorded. I'm just recording it because is this Brandon? Yes. Hey, Brandon. Um, this is John Alexander Mormon. Um, you remember you came over to my house because you were worried about me talking about the NSA? Yes. What is up? Well, see, since then, I got arrested because my neighbor, like, fake like he was drawing a gun on me, and then he threatened me with a Magnum Shooting Center shirt. And I thought he was a fed. Like, I thought, because he, he works for Oracle, so I thought he was, like, an undercover CIA guy, because I know a lot of times they, they're active on American soil. Anyway, so then we got arrested because I wrote him a note that wasn't actually a threat. It was just saying, hey, here's what you did. Don't do that behavior again. And um, now the police in Colorado Springs have removed evidence from my discovery. I just got the file and they, they omitted evidence. Okay. So um, isn't that, is that something you'd call the FBI about? Well, the that other would thing be is, something you, you would you, contact okay, so, the, uh, the prosecutor about. But the prosecutor knows that it's omitted. Because I talked about it in a video in response to the arrest, and then suddenly it's missing. So I'm saying this is like kind of the, okay. So do you know that there's a, an illegal drug lab in Colorado Springs? It wouldn't surprise me. Because there's a lot of DEA here, right? And no. did you know I did a hunger strike in Colorado Springs for 47 days, and I also did in Santa Barbara. So, John, I guess what was it? No, I'm, I'm, all I'm asking is if you know that I did it. I'm not trying to trap you. All I'm saying, did you know that I starved myself? No. You never heard about it. No. In your Colorado, your Colorado Springs FBI. Correct. Just like you never heard of Bakersfield, even though I've been writing tweets about these cops in Bakersfield putting bestiality porn on my computer as a child, but you never heard of that city. But then you're the FBI agent they tell to call me? John, if you have questions about your discovery, I would recommend you ask your attorney about that. I'm, I'm trying to talk to you because you reached out to me because you're concerned about me. And I'm saying I'll be transparent with you. I'm talking about this drug lab. I'm saying that I'm getting targeted. And then I'm, I get threats constantly. So I have a reason that I'm getting threats. But then no one wants to admit that the lab exists. But then I do know people that have been arrested. So I can, I can bring them in and be like, well, hey, did you, did you get arrested at some point? But then I have to go get them from Texas. So I'm trying to figure out, like, who do I go to in the government to find someone that will just, like, be basically honest? You don't have to say, here's the classified information I know. What you actually have to just say is, yeah, this guy's not actually crazy. Trust me, all the NSA people did show up at his office when he was working for um, working on a project for the Department of Homeland Security, or at least they were funding it. So I'm still not following what you, what you need for me. I'm trying to get someone that will actually be a human being for once. Like it sounds, it sounds like you like all these federal agents are afraid to talk because they murdered and framed Mark Anthony Condit for the Austin bombings, and they know it, and they know that there's a missing piece of evidence there, and that's why they will never release it. And so what you're trying to do is shut me up by threatening me with a gun and then getting me arrested, and then no one will say, oh, yeah, he did do a hunger. So apparently, you you haven't heard that I starved myself for 47 days protesting the FBI, but then you're who they put on my case. You don't know Honestly, anything about me I, I whatsoever? Have, have you never heard of me? John, are, are you doing okay? I'm you not, like you're I'm trying to figure out about this. why I can't find a federal agent that acts like a real person. Well, I'm on the phone talking to you. And you're avoiding every question I ask you. Well, honestly, I was not involved in the Austin bombing and... Yeah, but wouldn't you want to go look up the evidence if you're like an actual cop, just to confirm it? Because if there's anything you know is that I spend my life around federal agents all the time, if, you, if you've looked into my background enough. I mean, I talked to a guy about, named Taylor about the Austin Bomber. I mean, I, I, have you looked up Taylor? 
He attended UTSA. I do not know who Taylor is. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, it's like no one wants to help you with an investigation. It's like you should investigate alone by making allegations when all you guys have to do is make the Austin bombing confession public. So where are you from? Where'd you grow what up? can I help you with? <laughs> I'm just trying to I'm just trying to figure out who you are and like I'm not like why are you even on the phone with me right now? Line. Well, but I mean, so you do know in our so, conversation. So I'm not going to tell you that. I, I about have that. to record it because I'm trying to get evidence. Like you, you're you've given me the best evidence yet. There's probably a drug lab in Colorado Springs, is what you said. Which is enough for me to say, hey, there's definitely a criminal organization here that the feds are interested in. That's in that that helps. That me with would my be trial. an inaccurate so, statement because I do not work any of the drug issues in Colorado Springs. But you know that other issues connect to the drug issues if you're an actual federal agent that uses his brain. Yes, like I said, I assume. Like like when there. people start getting when, like when when a shooting happens, a lot of the time it has to do with drugs. So you're acting like you don't know about that, which is misleading because it sounds like you're trying to work against me for my case now, even though you already kind no, of said I that you think there's a drug lab here. I don't want you to be reading too many things into what I'm saying. So no, I what, that, what can I help I you with, I think you're being John? dishonest. And like, I think that's representative of the FBI ever since J. Edgar Hoover. And it's just like, it's like part of your culture is covering stuff up now. And that's why you well, I'm sorry you feel this guy that way. to threaten me with a gun. Well, I mean, what about this guy in Waco who lit himself on fire in his car? The ATF says it's a suicide. How the hell do you let yourself on fire in your car? You, you get out. Like no one stays in their car when they're lit on fire unless they're already dead. Somehow the ATF says this guy committed suicide by like being like a Buddhist monk in Tibet, which is an extreme form of protest. People don't burn themselves for as suicide. People try to find fast, easy ways to die when they commit suicide. They don't hurt themselves. But for some reason, no one in the federal government wants to question whether or not that guy that did that investigation for the ATF is dirty. Because he knows there's no way this kid committed suicide. But, you know, it's all right. At this point, I think, I, I don't know what I'm going to have to do. I think I just have to depend on not you being a good cop, but other people being good cops. All right, you're not going to talk to me anyways. Thanks. All right, you're not going to talk to me.